All right, so this is the NPR radio project that we came out with a couple of weeks ago. And it uses uh, conductive PLA. These are conductive PLA buttons. And you touch them and they control like uh, the NPR radio app. Um, so they're printed separately. And this black here is just um, regular PLA. The top here is an acrylic, uh, CNC milled acrylic. And this cover here is like um, uh, hemp PLA, this is like a wood-based PLA. So that's like cool contrasting color. But what we've been trying to do, originally what we wanted to do is make this uh, dual extruded since you have to print these buttons out separately and then snap them back together. Um, there's a little bit of problems with it. Like sometimes the tolerances aren't right. And if you push a button, it'll like it's, uh, it'll just push right through. So you're supposed to lightly tap on them, but they're, they're held in place because they have like tack like mounting tack in them, so they so they kind of stay in place. But um, ideally what you want to do is dual extrude it. So we've been trying to dual extrude it for uh, a couple weeks, and we had some problems with our dual extruder, and uh, particularly the Flashforge Creator Pro, when we tried printing it on that, it was very sort of oozy. I don't have it with me right now to show you, but it, it just looked kind of terrible. We actually showed it off on a, a couple weeks ago on 3D Hangouts, but this, is our latest dual extrusion test using the Sigma from BCN 3D. And this just came out amazing. Um, so this did have an ooze shield, and of course the Sigma has uh, independent um, heads that park every time it's uh, it's depositing material. So it's always primed and it's always um, wiping itself clean. So there's like zero contamination on here. Um, and it worked out really well. The, we tried two different prints. The first one that came out really well um, had a horizontal compensation, which is a setting that you can apply in uh, Simplify 3D, where it kind of makes everything a little bit thicker so that it overlaps. And uh, we kind of forgot to turn that off, and I kind of can't use that part because since it is horizontal compensation, um, it's a uh, some of the stand some of the pegs for the for the components to mount onto. They're just too thick, so they're not gonna fit. So everything just kind of expands with it. Um, so that was kind of like a not good thing. So we had to do it again with horizontal composition turned off. Uh, so let me see if I can zoom in here, get better detail. So you're, there are a little bit of uh, ringing artifacts. And if you look here, there's a little bit of a gap. So there's a little bit of, uh, I guess, a margin of error with these things. Because you can calibrate the machine um, but it only calibrates sort of flat on the X and Y, not on the Z. These are printed, of course, upward, so... Uh, only some of the buttons are off. Like, these these here, are, these three that are printed uh, forward, they are, are pretty good. But then when you look at the ones on the side, um, they have that little bit of gap, which I'm not sure, not too sure about. Um, this one particularly, you can see a lot there. Probably see that, yeah, it's probably better there. So you can see how it's offset it a little bit. So, I mean, it's not perfect, but it's pretty darn good. I haven't seen, I, I don't have any other printer that can print it this good. So the thing I'd wanna do is obviously take the components out of here and mount it in here. But the thing is to get the wires connected to the conductive PLA, I need something called bare conductive paint, which is a, a paint that has uh, conductive particles in it. And that takes a little bit, so. All right, so here's the first test that I was talk talking about. This one does have horizontal compensation. And what horizontal compensation does is it sort of, it sort of merges the, the layers together, the two parts. So it blends them together nicely. So you don't see that, um, that gap that we saw in the second print where the horizontal compensation is turned off. Uh, so there's some, some good and bad about it. The good is that there's no gap. The bad is that there's, there is contamination, so you can see how it kind of wiped its way into the white material. This is all, this is white PLA, and this is still the conductive PLA stuff. Uh, or maybe it's not, no, I'm pretty sure it's conductive PLA. So uh, the thing there is that, again, I can't fit my components in here because the, the pegs have been expanded uh, by half of a millimeter, or, or some, a factor of a half of a millimeter. Uh, so some, so it, it's increased overall. Um, so that's, you know, that's not going to fit when you need perfect uh, measurements, perfect tolerances. So 
this is good for like a you know like a uh, a unicorn horn that has a spiral that has a gap and then you you, you fill it in with a horizontal comb station but it doesn't work so well with something that really de re relies on depends on um correct uh, tolerances and dimensions so i just thought i'd share that one as well but again there's a little bit of uh, bleeding and contamination here especially with the white you can really see on the inside you can see it's a bit more prevalent and you can even see it here how it worked away and this was printed with an ooze shield uh so it, it really didn't help that much so you really have to kind of pick and choose do i want to have that gap i mean I think the the ideal thing to do is to actually do the horizontal compensation in your CAD, in your design. So ideally I would have had to have these buttons just a teeny bit larger that so that it would uh, blend into this this part here. So so that might be an option to try out, but hey, it's a, it's all about testing and trying it out. That's about it. Just wanted to show you guys some progress on uh, dual extrusion. Good stuff.